Hello, yes, my life is delicious. I am your host, Latanya Black Gilliard. Welcome to Delicious Life. And yes, I am, let's see, a singer, producer, director, an author, an actor, and a certified nutritionist. So welcome to my savory podcast. Yes, well, we're going to be cooking up a little love, inspiration, freedom, and enlightenment. This is not a politically correct podcast. You can't stand the heat, then you know you just got to get out the kitchen. Ha <laughs> ha, yes. So, I thank you for joining me. This is my first podcast, so welcome. And hopefully I can join you on a weekly basis and uh it'll be me but i'm gonna have a few sous chefs in the kitchen with me we're gonna have some people who are just good friends of mine we're gonna have maybe a few name people you call those celebrities (laughs) we're gonna have some holistic people because this is what started my journey so i um the reason, and I'm very passionate about all of those things I mentioned, but very passionate about being a certified nutritionist because, um, gosh, 21 years ago, yeah, 21 years ago, I had Graves' disease. And Graves' disease is pretty much when your body is attacking itself, um, and mainly the thyroid gland. And I have a book that I'm writing right now called, I apologize to my thyroid. Because if any of you have ever experienced thyroid issues, oh my God, you know what? You wouldn't wish it on your worst enemy. And it's an uphill battle, just always fighting. But I think I'm finally getting to a point where I'm winning, you know? Gotta do research, learning, unlearning, um, not listening to the medical community because they don't know anything. It's amazing what they don't know. And then have you ever run up against a doctor that has a God complex? They get mad at you because you know more about your body than they do. I mean, I'm like, okay, isn't that what we're supposed to do? So anyway, enough of that. Like I told you, I'm not politically correct. Look, child, once you hit your 50s, you say whatever you want to say, and you could care less about what people think about it. Because life is life. Life is too short to be something that you're not. So I totally agree with being my authentic self. All right? So hopefully that will inspire you to be your authentic self. You don't have to please anybody. You don't have to... um, kiss anybody's behind when it comes to your life, you know, just stay open. That's all I believe. Stay open, stay kind, which is hard for some people to do. But I do believe kindness goes a long way. My mom used to say, you could catch a lot more flies with honey than you can with vinegar. And I'd say, who wants to catch flies? (laughs) But you know what she meant. So I do know what she meant. My mom was amazing. Bless her soul. So welcome to my first podcast. And I'm excited about doing this because uh, I have so many wonderful people in my life. And we all have a story. We all have a story. And the thing is, is your story serving you or is your story not serving you? So that's the big thing about my savory podcast. Let's just get real. You know what? A lot of us have mindsets that are limiting, mindsets that hold us back. And I have learned what held me back in the past. And, you know, not speaking up about certain things, not speaking my truth, not living and walking in my truth. And that is very harmful to you. 
It is very harmful to you. Um, it's the whole reason why we have Me Too movements and all these other movements that people ha have created in order to feel validated about the way you feel, about things that were done to you, you know? Because when you really think about it, you teach people how to treat you. Nobody should have an edge over anything that you do because you allow it, you know? Um, you attract what you are, not necessarily what you want. And those of us in the dating world, we should know that. <laughs> I'm not in the dating world anymore. Hallelujah. Married for eight years to the wonderful Carl Gilliard. Some of you probably know who he is. Uh, great actor, great uh, thespian. And um, just look him up. You'll know who he is, probably. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much for joining me. Um, so 20 years ago, 21 years ago, when I had Graves' disease, I was, you know, born and raised in North Carolina. And I didn't leave North Carolina until I went to, uh, well, I mean, I traveled, you know, through the states. But, you know, that was about it. Hadn't even, didn't even leave the country. But I went to Howard University. Uh, for a little while. Didn't graduate from Howard. I had to come back home and I went to Winston-Salem State University, SSU, Rams. But um, still like being a part of the Bison, you know, family. I was there for a while. And anyway, long story short, I had Graves' disease. I treated, I took the treatment that was not the best. I was under the care of an endocrinologist who had no idea what he was doing, but at the time he thought he did. So, you know, I harbored no ill will towards him. I just wish I knew what the heck was going on with my body because believe it or not, I did ask him, I said, well, what causes this? Well, his answer was, we don't know. And it's like, when you hear that from a doctor, you should run, <laughs> but you're going to hear it a lot, I realized, and it's just the way it is. So there's a lot of things they don't know. You know, we're guinea pigs pretty much if something happens to us and they can't figure it out. So that's why it is up to you to know your body, and it is up to you to be an advocate for your own health. It is up to you to know what you're eating. It is up to you to know what you're drinking. It is up to you to know what you're rubbing into your skin and what you're ingesting into this body. And we have been hoodwinked. We have been fooled. We have been led astray by the food industry and by our water in whatever town we lived in, you know, our municipal systems. We have been just shysted, you know? Most of the stuff in a grocery store is fake. It's not real food. And you have to know that because as much as we all need to be growing our own food, some people I know just aren't going to have the time and some people I know just don't have the wherewithal or the energy, but that's going to have to change because we're going to have to start doing that, y'all. We are. We're going to have to start growing our own food. And the worst part about that is you got to get real seeds. You got to get real seeds because we have been inundated with GMOs, genetically modified organisms. Yeah. So there's GMO seeds, which means you're going to be growing a GMO crop. And that's not going to be the best for our nutrition. So heirloom seeds, if you can find those, those are still the most authentic and organic seeds out there. And if you've gotten a hold of some real fruit, some real food that's not genetically modified and you can sprout it and grow it yourself, by all means, do that. Okay. Go back to your old uh, chemistry and um, homemaking classes. You know, you cut a potato and it starts sprouting those funny little things on it. That means it's growing, you know, and hopefully it's not GMO. Um, and then you plant it, 
you know, water it and watch that baby grow. And you've got you some potatoes. The same with you got some tomatoes. You do the same thing with the pineapple. There's just so many things that we should be growing ourselves. I mean, I now know that the reason I had Graves' disease was because of my diet. The doctor didn't know. But you got to realize, too, doctors, when they go to med school, Med schools are run and owned and organized by Big Pharma. So doctors are taught by the pharmaceutical companies how to write you up a prescription and make your symptoms go away, not to get to the root cause of what is bothering you or what it is. Now, you have some doctors. I'm not going to throw all of them under the bus. There are some good doctors. And I really believe in the holistic community too, because holistic doctors are more than likely going to try to get to the root cause of what is ailing you. You got a sore throat. We're not just going to give you antibiotics or something to make it go away. We're going to see what the, the holistic community is like, okay, what have you been eating? What's coming up through your stomach? Have you been eating too much acid, some acid forming foods? Have you been burping? What medications are you taking that may be causing this? You know, pretty much now, most people that I know go to the doctor when they have something that they really need to go to the doctor for. Broken things. <laughs> you got to go, go to a doctor, get your bones reset. You got to have you know, emergency surgery sometimes, but there is a place for all of that. And rather than bad mouth doctors, I bless them. And I hope they all one day realize that that Hippocratic oath that says do no harm also applies to all the medications that they're putting you on. I would hope that one day all the doctors realize that if they're putting you on more medications, you already taken one or two and they're going to put you on more. That's not the way to heal you, you know? So I say all this to say when I had Graves disease, my endocrinologist at the time gave me three treatment options, um, surgery and medication and radiation. And so I asked him, I said, well, if it was your daughter, your wife, what would you recommend? He said, I'd recommend the radiation because he said the, the medication could probably cause some damage to your kidneys and the surgery. Well, you know, that's going to leave a scar on your neck and you may not really have to have that. And I said, okay, so what is this radiation going to do? So pretty much, um, it was, a pill that I had to take and it was a big pill and it was something like a, a <laughs> sci-fi thing. I took the pill and they had me in front of this x-ray like machine and I, and it showed all the little radioactive isotopes going down toward my thyroid. I'm like, how the heck does it know out of all the organs in my body? How does it know how to go toward my thyroid? That still baffles me. But it knew to go to where my thyroid was, where all of that overactivity was, and kind of shut it down. Which, oh God, I wished I had known how much damage I was doing to my thyroid. I mean, it basically was killing it. So I had to stay away from my family for three days because I was radioactive. And I had a little girl, a little baby girl at the time. She was only six months old. And so I had to stay away from her and it was horrible. Um, so I did that. And with the Graves disease, I had a goiter. I had, it was like an Adam's apple. It looks like a man's Adam's apple. It, my, my thyroid was that inflamed. And so it started going down after I had the radiation. Um, I never did get the bulging eyes. But I felt miserable. I mean, Graves' disease was pretty much uh, my body, my immune system attacking my body. And 
what I had to learn was if that treatment didn't work, that I had to do it again. Trying not to overdo it because it would take my thyroid from being overactive, which is pretty much all Graves' disease is, hyperthyroidism, where your thyroid becomes overactive. I'm going to tell you something. The only fun thing about that was losing weight. Oh my God. I could eat whatever I wanted to, and I lost weight constantly. But that's because my body was like, you know, your thyroid is your thermostat, you know? It it's, it's it takes care of all of your, it, your metabolism. It rules. It's like the guard of all the metabolic systems in your body. Thyroid hormone goes to every organ in your body. And it's regulated. I'm not going to try to give you a lesson right now. Your pituitary gland, your thymus gland, you know, it all tells your thyroid how much hormone to release. So we'll get into that one day. But either way, the treatment worked for a little while and then it came back um, and I had to get another pill, which took me from being hyperthyroid to hypo, which is underactive, which is where you do just the opposite. You still feel bad. You still have... Like your muscles feel like lead, no, you know, no energy, fatigue. But this time you gain weight. Nobody wants to deal with that. So I was gaining weight like drinking water was making me gain weight. You know, fasting was making me gain weight. So then I jumped on the roller coaster ride of medications. So I had to start taking the Synthroid or the uh, generic form, which is levothyroxine. Anyway, I had to go start taking a certain dosage of that, go back in a few weeks, get my blood drawn, see what my numbers are. And if it's still too low, it gave me more. If it was too high, they took it away. Anything to try to get some balance. So I started feeling better. That lasted maybe about a year. And then I started realizing that, okay, I'm still gaining weight, um, but this is my lot in life. You know, they damaged my thyroid, so you have to take these pills for the rest of your life. Long story short, I am now researching on how I can stop taking those pills. You know why? Because they have not done hardly any studies on these pills. Now we are doomed to take these pills. There's over there's millions of people who are hypothyroid and have to take these pills. I mean, literally, not just to lose weight. That's that they have to take it because their thyroid gland's not doing what it's supposed to do. And people like me who had radiation or people who had thyroidectomies where the thyroid is completely gone, you know, there's no thyroid to measure. So you just have to take them. The fake thyroid hormone goes into your body. And people who still have a working thyroid is just maybe not working as well. I hope you realize you don't have to take those medications. You can change your diet and heal your thyroid to the point where you don't need to take those medications. Trust me, these medications, the Synthroid, the Levothyroxine, they haven't tested these to see what they do to our bodies. They don't know if they cause cancer. They don't know if they cause other things to happen in our body. They just prescribe it because they just ching ching all the way to the bank because that's a monthly payment that they're going to get every month from millions of people. And I'm like, people, we got to wake up. We got to start checking. Guess what I found, though, in my research? See, now I research. Back then in North Carolina, you didn't know what to do. Whatever the doctor said, you followed it. I moved away to California. California had more holistic doctors, more doctors willing to listen to you and find other ways of treatment. And so I was lucky enough to come across a doctor. I never forget him. His name was Joshua Rokaw. And he was very controversial because he was bold enough and brave enough to try 
different thyroid medications. So instead of the regular Synthroid or Levothyroxine, I asked him, because I had done some research at that time, and I said, I want to try the natural, which natural is just the desiccated, ground-up thyroid of a pig or a cow. So it's either porcine or bovine. And we are not, you know, biologically identical to an animal. We're just not. But for some reason, they make you feel better. And when you go through being on medications forever and they still make you feel like crap, you're willing to try anything. So when I tried that desiccated thyroid, oh my God, I got more energy. I even lost a little weight. My hair stopped shedding. It was wonderful. Wonderful for many, many years. But then you go through that other thing called life and evolving and change. And so my body got to a point where it was like, okay, well, this isn't working anymore either. I need something else. So I'm going to tell you, it's such a roller coaster ride. Like I said, I wouldn't wish it upon my worst enemy. Those of you who are in the thyroid disease community, hyper or hypothyroid community, trust me, I feel your plight. And I advocate for you because there's a lot that we just don't know. And we have to research and do our own. No one should know our bodies better than us. And our bodies won't want homeostasis. They, they want to be well. And we'll just, our bodies are like, come on, come on, help me out here. I mean, did you realize? <laughs> Look, the medical community does what it does, you know? A doctor goes to school, uh, you know, a med student goes to school, learns what they teach them, and it passes, they pass it on. The only thing that's going to change what they learn is experience. Learn, you know, running into other people and patients who have done their own research, and if they're smart, they will, and wise, they will listen, you know? If they don't agree, they'll, they will do some research and find out and say, okay, this is evidently working for these people. Let me see what's going on. Or it's not working for these people. Let me see what's going on. You know, I cheer for doctors like that. Um, but don't, not the ones who are like, oh, well, well you're not going to listen to me. So just go get another doctor. I'm God. Yeah. We've had enough of these God complex doctors. I'm telling you, if you got a doctor like that, run forest, run go to another one. Find somebody who's going to listen to you. Find any doctor who's going to be kind to you and who's not going to tell you everything's in your head. Find a doctor with some wisdom. And that's not easy. It's not easy. But they are out there. And the best ones are the holistic doctors who already know that the best treatment for you is going to be something natural. But of course, they're not covered by insurance. <laughs> so you're going to have to come out of pocket. Yeah. The best things for us in this country are not covered by insurance. So yeah, you can go to any other country in the, you know, the East, probably find a holistic doctor who's going to treat you the way they are normally treated, probably by something wonderful that has grown from the ground. And you know what? God made trees, herbs, plants for the healing of the nations. And that's the way it is. Man-made intervention is a good thing until it's not. But you got to know when. No matter how much a doctor tells you, you need this, you need that. You have to remember, you have the final say. You have the final say over your body. They don't. They can scare the crap out of you. They can scare you and talk you into anything. Yeah, it's happened to me. So I get it. But you got to be wise. You got to learn. You got to dig. You got to research. You got to look for things. And I'll tell you, once you start looking and going down that rabbit hole, 
oh boy, the world just opens up because there are some things that are happening to us that we just don't know of. So that's what I'm going to be talking to you about. I'm going to be talking to you about um, ways to, to take care of you and your family that aren't, you know, medical, that aren't normal like this. Black seed oil. Black seed oil. People say, some people swear by this. Okay. It was found in King Tut's tombs. It was just like the best thing that supposedly cures everything except death. I'll tell you something. I tend to believe that because I have put black seed oil on some parts of my body that were in pain and it totally went away. Totally takes away inflammation, but you got to get, and here's the thing. There's a million supplements and things like this out there, but you got to get the right ones. Okay. For instance, you should use a black seed oil that comes in a dark bottle and it should be glass. There's tons of black seed oils out there in plastic. You should never buy any oil in plastic. Not olive oil, not coconut oil, not any oil in plastic. Because oil has a pulling effect and it's going to pull that plastic. And every time you take it, you're ingesting plastic. Particles of plastic. That's not good for you. And you have to realize our health, our bodies are like a sponge. So you know, you see a sponge, and you let's say you take a little dropper and you just drip, drip, drip on a sponge. Now you know that sponge is not gonna swell up and expand until you put a lot of water in there. Okay? And then it's gonna reach that threshold where it starts to release, it fills up, and it's like, okay, I can't hold anymore, and it's going to start. That's the way our bodies are. The drip, drip, drip are all the toxins and chemicals and horrible things that we put into our bodies. It's like slow death until the point where we keep on eating Cheetos and Doritos and Oreos and um things that come in a can and we eat things that are in plastic and we microwave things and eat those and we ingest soybean oil and margarine and earth balance and uh, peanut oil and vegetable oil and canola oil. We ingest all this horrible, toxic, highly inflammatory stuff and our body's threshold we hit it. Once we hit that threshold, everybody's body's different. Everybody's sponge is different. And once we hit that threshold, though, where it starts to fill up and it's like, okay, I can't take any more, then it spills over. And it can be diabetes. It could be cancer. It could be renal failure, you know, the liver failure, kidney failure. Why take those kind of chances? Why not continue to have your sponge as dry as possible? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's going to slowly drip, drip, drip simply by going outside. The air that we breathe is toxic, you know, unless you live way somewhere where there's no industry and you're away from all technology. Good for you. But so most of us can't live like that anymore. You know, I don't even like camping. <laughs> I don't even like camping. I mean, if I had to, if we were all forced to and there was no more electricity, we could all adapt. We could. We could all adapt and live without electricity, without running water. Yeah, it would be crazy. But we could all adapt. Wouldn't you love to see all these spoiled, rotten kids have to live like that? <laughs> they probably go crazy. I mean, it's the makeup that we put on our face, you know? Uh, I'll be talking to you about that, too, because I have some wonderful brands that are non-toxic. Did you realize that the makeup ladies that you use, if it says talc, nine times, well, probably 100%, it's got asbestos in it. And you know they stopped you know, putting asbestos in stuff years ago, but they still put it in talc. So if you have anything 
That's why there was the lawsuits with the baby powder. And then they had to stop. Any powders, if it has talc, you are exposing yourself to asbestos, which is highly carcinogenic. It will cause cancer. It does cause cancer. And there's so many documentaries out now about that. It's crazy. But you got to learn this stuff. How many of you, I bet you go in there in your clock, go in your cabinets and read the ingredients on the back of any product that you have. Go in your pantry, go in your cabinet and pull out anything, anything that you use, a can of tuna, go in your refrigerator, look at your jar of spread, salad dressing, mayonnaise, pickles. Do you realize your jar of pickles probably has food dye in it and food dyes are carcinogenic? Do you realize that your children probably love sprinkles on their ice cream? Those food dyes, anything that has a color to it, sprinkles, skittles, now laters, uh, colorful birthday cakes, Anything that has a food dye. I mean, you might be using it to make your wonderful red velvet cake. Anything that has a chemical in it like that, it's killing you. And you're not doing the best for your children because it incites ADD, ADHD, and allergies, and just ruining your health. Drip, drip, drip. Slowly but surely. But surely, I mean, people get in their 30s, 40s, get that horrible diagnosis. I don't, how did I get cancer? I don't have anybody in my family that has cancer. I don't know anybody in my family that has diabetes. I don't know how anybody. Honey, it's what you're eating. It's what you're putting on your skin. It's what you're putting on your face. It's the lotion. It's the sunscreen. It's the shampoo. It's the conditioner. It's the toothpaste. It's everything. So I'm telling you, I am the most picky. My husband hates to shop with me sometimes, I know, because everywhere we go, I read the ingredients. And if it has some stuff on it that I don't like, I don't buy it. That's my prerogative. It's my choice. And I suggest that we all live like that. We should. So guess what? My shows, my Delicious Life podcast, we're going to be talking about all of this stuff. We're going to get into more in depth, in depth of it. Because if I had known then what I know now, I would never have damaged my thyroid. I would never have let them treat my thyroid the way they did. Because all I had to do was heal my gut. It was my diet. Oh my God, I was the junk food junkie queen, fast food queen. I had a horrible diet. And I was thin, but I had a horrible diet. And that's how it manifested too. That's the physical part. So we're, all gonna, we're also going to be talking about consciousness, enlightenment. There's a way to live your life where you can just create things. Yes, I do believe in the law of attraction. And it is real. It works because I've seen it work too many times in my life. And we're going to be talking about relationships. We're going to be talking about, no, sister, your picker is not broken. You probably have had a whole bunch of hormonal changes that has shifted your brain. <laughs> you know, and once you straighten that out, you might look at the man or woman that you're with and go, how did I end up with this person? What the heck? Let me tell you something. We're going to have some fun. We're going to get into some juicy stuff. We're going to just talk and we're going to have a lot of fun, y'all. Ooh, I'm drooling. <laughs> I'm silly. We're going to have fun. I'm just real. You know what? A lot of people can't deal with you when they know how real you are because they may not be real. You know, I know somebody who was married and her husband had never heard her pass gas. I'm not lying. <laughs> it's because you have to be real. And if you're afraid to be yourself, a lot of times it's not the other person's fault. It's you. 
you have to be real. You have to be real. What you think? Uh, uh, to be real. Yeah, we're going to do some of that too. I'm going to be bringing in some of my musical guests. I'm going to be bringing in some of my celebrity fun guests. I'm going to look y'all. This is a savory podcast. Totally not politically correct. We are free. So if you dare to join me, come on back. Come on into the table. And the spread is delectable and delightful. Thank you for joining Delicious Life. Let's go take a big bite out of life, you guys. I love you. And I will see you next time. Enjoy your life. To be real. Mm, 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 mm. Just my love